When you turn on the TV to watch an MLB game, there's a pretty high likelihood that you're going to see one of these. A home run. In today's game, we're seeing an increasingly high number of long balls. Luckily for us, along with the increase in hard hit balls, we've also been constantly creating new technology to quantify the good and the bad. And I'm not just talking about launch angle and exit velocity. In today's video, we're going to dive into a commonly referred to statistic, barrel percentage. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. Although we've briefly talked about this topic before in another video, leave a comment if you can remember which one, I first want to dive into the metrics that go into creating this awesome stat. It's easy to imagine where the barrel of the bat is, sometimes referred to as the sweet spot, but this metric doesn't describe the number of times that this portion of the bat is hit. With the average bat speed in the MLB coming in over 75 miles per hour, and the average MLB fastball coming in at 92 miles per hour, there isn't a way to precisely pinpoint where each ball makes contact with the bat. Yet, at least. So instead, what we have to do is calculate that point in which quality contact occurs with the information that we do have. We do this through two other popular variables most of you should be familiar with at this point, launch angle and exit velocity. To recap briefly, launch angle is the vertical angle in which the ball leaves a player's bat after being struck. You can think of it simply like this. Take our protractor for example. If the ball represents our point of contact, our line parallel to the ground is going to be zero degrees. Anything above that is going to be a positive number and below a negative. So if we have a ball hit on this line, we know that this launch angle will be 20 degrees. But if we switch that line to below our zero point, let's say to about here, we would now see a negative number at negative 10. This information then allows us to quantify the exact ranges where we define batted ball type. In this situation, our 20 would be considered a line drive and our negative 10 would be pretty clearly a ground ball. We can then pair this information with exit velocity, which simply measures the speed of the ball after it has been struck by the batter, to help us further define quality contact. Exit velocity can range from zero miles per hour to the current hardest hit ball from the StatCast and Hawkeye era of 121.7 miles per hour. Furthermore, we can define a point on this scale that we determine that batted balls can be deemed hard hit, this number being above 95 miles per hour. However, that information isn't quite good enough, purely because a ball hit above 95 miles per hour can also be hit with a negative 10 degree launch angle, typically resulting in a ground out. And who deserves to be rewarded for grounding out, even if it's hit hard? That's where barrel percentage comes into play. Let's discuss this further. So what is barrel percentage? The definition of a barrel off of MLB.com reads that it is a classification of a batted ball event whose exit velocity and launch angle values lead to a minimum batting average of above 500 and a slugging percentage above 1500 since the beginning of StatCast in 2015. That's a really fancy way of them saying a statistically well hit ball based on all of the past data that we have. If you go onto their website, link below, you can find this helpful chart showing what is defined as the barrel zone. You'll notice a similar launch angle graph to what we talked about in the last slide, where additionally, the amount the ball moves away from the center of the half circle represents exit velocity, the dark red indicating the barrel zone. They go on to further discuss how exactly that zone is quantified, starting as balls hit above 98 miles per hour between the launch angle range of 26 to 30, and as our exit velocity increases, so does our launch angle range. So at 99 miles per hour, our range grows by a single degree in each direction to 25 to 31 degrees. And at 100, it's now 24 degrees to 33 degrees. That trend continues until it maxes out at a 116 mile per hour exit velocity, where the launch angle range sits from eight degrees to 50 degrees. So if you're looking to calculate this out with your own TrackMan data, here is your guide. So great, now we've defined what a barrel is, but this video is about barrel percentage. What's that? Well, great question. If you head to Baseball Savant to check out their barrel percentage leaderboards, you will find two columns. One labeled barrels per plate appearance, and the other barrels per batted ball event. These calculations are exactly what you would expect them to be. The total number of barrels divided by each of the total plate appearances of that player, or the total number of batted ball events they've had, otherwise known as batted balls in play. To give you an idea of what a good range is for this number, here are the top three in the MLB right now in each category. In third, we have Joey Votto who has a barrel percentage per plate appearance of 11.5%. 
meaning that just over one out of every 10 at-bats Joey has results in a barrel. His barrel per batted ball event is 18.7, meaning that nearly two out of every 10 balls Joey puts in play are a barrel. You see the difference now? In second, we have Fernando Tatis Jr. with 13.1% barrels per plate appearance and a 21.8% barrel per batted ball event. And of course, atop our leaderboard is the one and only Shohei Otani with a whopping 13.5% barrel per plate appearance and a 24.2 barrel per batted ball event. For your knowledge, the more frequently referred to barrel percentage is going to be the barrel per plate appearance, but these are the top three in the same order whether you take the plate appearances or the batted ball events. So there you have it, the complete guide to barrels. Let's wrap this up by diving into my main takeaways from barrel percentage. Barrel percentage is a relatively easy to understand stat that is also pretty easy to calculate. It's a great predictive stat that can often help you understand that if someone is making a high amount of quality contact, they're probably going to find their way on base and help your team win at the plate. Looking at barrel percentage is a lot like the way that we have developed our classic statistics like batting average. Over the years, it's morphed from just batting average to slugging and OBP, but then has developed and grew to OPS, and before long was turned into advanced stats like WOBA. In our case here, we started with a question, what actually defines well hit? And from there, technology filled in our answer, some combination of exit velo and launch angle. From there, we got hard hit percentage, which took into account exit velo but left out launch angle, where we finally got to barrel percentage. What's the next big thing? You tell me. That's the great part about our sport, is that we are continuously advancing. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.